Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, it's Hunts and Bunks here and today we're going to be talking about whether Newcastle are a genuine contender for the Premier League title. Uh, the other day we posted a video whether Arsenal or City are the best um, title contenders at the moment, but I think Newcastle also need to have a mention considering how well they've been doing so far this season. I'm doing with Tom. Yeah, I mean, they're on, they're on 35 points, so they, they are only, what, nine points off Arsenal at the top of the league? Um, and obviously people say City are in a title race, but that being said, Newcastle have played one more game than Arsenal, two more than City. So, are they in a title race? Uh, I suppose if, you, if you're going to claim Newcastle are in a title race, you kind of have to say United are in, because United have a game in hand on the same points. Um, I'm just going to put out my cards on the table right now. I think a title's a bit too sort of past Newcastle. Uh, I don't think personally they're in that kind of position to be in that conversation. I think the title at the moment, at least, is between City and Arsenal. A lot of this will depend on, obviously, City's result tonight, where they play Chelsea away, I believe. Um, but they have been amazing. We'll discuss aspects of the team, the job Eddie Howe's done in this video, um, and evaluate what we think is possible for this Newcastle side going forward. Because there are sides that are a bit inevitable. With the funds that Newcastle have at disposal, they will be in a title race in the next few years. I just think this season is a little bit early. Um, but what are your thoughts? Go on. Yeah, I'm pretty similar, to be honest. I think the squad depth is the problem, that the biggest problem that they've got with having to bring Chris Wood in. I know Isak and Wilson are out at the moment. So that's quite a, a rare situation. Or Wilson was out, sorry. Um, it's quite a rare situation to have two strikers both injured. But I think in quite a lot of positions in... Like midfield, for example, if you get an injury to the likes of Willock or or potentially Joel Linton when he's in midfield, you have to bring in Shelby. I think the, the difference in class between their midfield, their starting midfield and then the reserve midfield is too big to be able to keep it up across the whole season at least. I think a lot can be said uh, for the fact that Newcastle don't have, maybe you can class Bruno as borderline, but they don't have a world-class player. They have team that works together really well and has good team uh, spirit, good team occasion. They've got a manager who's very good, yeah. but they don't have a world-class player. Now, even when Leicester won the league, they had a world-class player. They had arguably three. Now, I know they were unearthed hidden gems that they brought in that summer before, being Mares, being um, N'Golo Kante, and then arguably Jamie Vardy. Um, I suppose he's world class in the system that Leicester played, but they still had three fantastic players um, in the midst of very decent players or good players. Um, whereas Newcastle lack that. You may you maybe got Bruno Gomez. Um, then there's other people like Nick Pope. Shot stopping wise might be borderline, but he's not there as in a whole all round modern day world class keeper. Um, so it's going to be hard for them, in my opinion, to have that cutting edge that, that rivals Arsenal and City um, at being were like being league leaders, league champions. They, I don't think they're in a title race from that aspect. That being said, against Arsenal, they did get a little bit lucky with two penalty decisions, most likely one, actually. I'd say the Gabriel Magalhaes um, shirt pull was a penalty. I don't think the handball was a penalty from, if I'm looking at it from an unbiased view, because of the sort of distance and the power that the actual ball travelled at to his arm. Yes, could you say his arm's up? Yeah, but I'm not having that. Um, but they did hold their own. Very good defensively, as you know. Uh, very structured defensively. I know that Eddie Howe worked with Diego Simeone before he joined Newcastle. Uh, he had a little bit of time at Atletico Madrid. One is like, like the gap between jobs. He went there and studied defensive football, which is shown because they're very good defensively. Um, they've only lost one game all season, which is absolutely mental. Um, and they've got an easy run. So momentum could continue for Newcastle, it has to be said. Um, but I just don't think they have it in them right now, unless they have a massive January for a title push. Yeah, I also think if you're comparing it to Leicester, as in before when Leicester won the league, I think the quality of the league in general now is a lot higher. As in there's quite a few teams that are just right at the top. So you've got United, City... Arsenal, and you've got a few teams that have got very good quality. Like, for example, Spurs have got a good attacking outlet in attacking front three in Kane, Kulisevsky and so on. 
And then you've got the likes of Liverpool as well and Chelsea. Because I think back when Leicester won the league, there weren't as many sides that would you'd put up right at the top. And that's why it was slightly easier for Leicester to win the league. As well as the point, the total points that they got at the end of the season wasn't as high. Um, whereas I think this year it's going to be right at the very top echelons of 80 points probably uh, for the winners of the league. So looking at the next five league games, obviously there's two. There's an FA Cup and the EFL Cup game before the, they start the league season again. Um, but they've got Fulham at home, Palace away, West Ham at home, Bournemouth away, and then Liverpool at home. So the kind it's kind of a good set of five fixtures to come yeah. back after the cup. How many points realistically? Obviously, looking at Newcastle, they have amassed eight draws so far this season. Yeah, out of the eighteen games played, um, they've won nine and drawn one. They uh, lost one. Sorry. How many points do you think realistically they are going to get from those five games? From those five, I mean, to be honest, the first, I can't see past them winning, not winning the first three. I think the first three they've got, they're definitely going to win, and then Bournemouth as well. Uh, Bournemouth as well. I'd be surprised if they lost that. I'd say, I'd say from the first four at least, I, I think they'd get three wins and a draw. I think three wins and two draws from those five. To yeah, I think, I think, I'd agree. I think they're going to beat Palace, even though Palace are a good side. They'll beat West Ham, who are poor. Um, they'll beat Bournemouth. Fulham is the stumbling block out of them for me. If you look mm-hmm. at them four games, Fulham playing very nice football. Um, they've got a good attacking unit, and they're a sound proposition. So Fulham will be tricky. I think the other lot will be all right. And then Liverpool, obviously, will be hard. Um, I think they're probably going to get, if I had to put my neck on the line, three wins from five, uh, probably a loss and a draw. Yeah, I think that's realistic. The thing is with Newcastle, while they've got a couple games that might be tough, maybe Fulham at home, as you said, is the hardest one. I can't see past Newcastle when they're at home. When they're at home, I feel like they're an unbeatable force almost. They're they're ridiculously good at home with the with the brilliant atmosphere, obviously at St James's. So while Liverpool will be a tough test, I still really think they're they're obviously the favourites for that. And then I think they will still win. Part of me still thinks they will win that. But then you've got to also be realistic and because uh, it's probably unlikely they'll win the next five on the bounce at the same time. Yeah, no, I don't think they will. I don't think they're in a position to do so because as much as Obviously, Newcastle are a very decent side. The issue will come. Isaac's out. Wilson's fitness is horrendous overall in his career. They're going to get injuries. They're obviously getting Alan St. Maximum back. And he's sort of an unknown partner because they're such a key sub unit where it's built on team building and uh, and workmanship, so to speak, that St. Maximum might not come back and be in the team straight away, St. Maximum. Yeah. And he might not even get in the team again because... As much as he's a star player, he's very good on the ball. He's not necessarily got that team ethic that Eddie Howe sort of wants his side to embody right now. Yeah. Um, in terms of the table, then, they are currently sat third. Uh, as I said, United have a game in hand, which is, I don't know if that's against that, actually, for United. I know they, that United have in the league, they have Man City next, or uh, at home, sorry. Then they have Arsenal. So it's not necessarily like United are favourites for that sort of third spot really I do think they'll lose one of those chance those and Newcastle will cement themselves in third for the time being um if us make projections I think you know uh, Newcastle will get the top four um yeah. I think they'll come probably fourth and I think one of United Tottenham or Liverpool will sort of overtake them that being said that's me reverting to f- sort of the mean of the Premier League as in me putting the big teams ahead of them. Uh, But I do think Newcastle will make the top four this season. That's my prediction. I don't think they're they're at a title challenge yet. But I think next year they build on fourth, they probably come third. And then the year after is when they're going to challenge for the title. And that's my prediction. Um, My only sort of worry for them, or Newcastle, is Eddie Howe. Now, we know he's good. We know he's done well to get to this point. But is Eddie Howe the manager that's going to take Newcastle to a league title. And I don't think he is. The thing is, I think it gets to a point. I agree with you. I doubt, I don't, I don't see him for being in there for the long run, but I think it's going to take a lot of big signings for them to transfer from being a very good side that are now challenging against the big teams to just being that big team that are now intimidating because of how good their players are. Cause they're going to have to have quite a few big transfer windows in my opinion, at least 
before they bring in the new manager where they think, now this is where we have to be getting Champions League. But do, you, do you not think that if they got Champions League, that's probably when you move on from Hal? Because you want the next team to be built, the transfer windows to be built in the next manager's image. Not necessarily like the so say they bring in a Diego Simeone. Let's just use an example there. You're gonna want if he's gonna be your league manager or Jose Mourinho or whoever the hell you want to bring in, then the signings have to be his, otherwise they're wasting time. So surely it makes sense to jump the gun, maybe get rid of how when they get Champions League. I know it's harsh, very harsh. Um, and then get the windows that make the next manager sort of have his team when it comes to challenging, if that makes sense. Um, I only used Diego Simone as he came to mind just because they've had one loss and a very good defensively, only conceding 11 goals in the league when they are the best defence in the league. So it suits a defensive manager at the moment. Um, my other thing is, I think they need to continue what they're doing with the transfer windows. They need the right manager, not just any manager. And they need the right players. Arsenal, you wouldn't say, for example, in the last few years, really, other than maybe Jesus, have signed stars. They've spent money, yeah, but they've signed players that fit the mould, have the right mentality, teamwork, hard work, and that's sort of what Newcastle have done to a sort of lesser ex extent recently, bringing in players like Botman, who have the right mentality, uh, and obviously Alexander Isaac and all the like, will work hard and fit the team ethos. And I think... That's sort of sensible signings will go a lot further than if they went out and signed a Jao Felix or they went out and signed a Paolo Dybala or something like that. I think they've got to get the signings right and they have done so far. I just think, can, can Newcastle win the league? Are they in a title challenge this season? The thing is, I, I get what you mean about bringing a new manager quick because then you set in the statement that now we're this massive club. But the way that they've done their business, at least in the transfer market, has been very steady. They've not rushed into things too quick. They've not spent... 100 million, for example, on Enzo Fernandez straight away, just to prove that they're now in business. They're now going to be I right think, straight away. I don't think financial fair play will let them do that. Arena. Yeah, but the way they've done it, spending 10 million on Pope, 10 million on Trippier, there are ways that they could have spent more than that. They could have spent a bit more, like a 40 million, for example. I know they spent about 60 on ISAP, but other than that, They've barely spent more than 20 million since the takeovers happened. So the way they've done yeah. the business in the transfer market makes me think they'd be as measured and they think about it enough to leave let how do it do it as he's doing and let them perform as well as they can until eventually they end up dropping off. Because there will be a point where the players become too good for Eddie Howe in terms of the ones that they bring in. And then you'll see the drop off. And then as soon as that happens, I think they'll just that'll where that'll be where they'll cut ties. But Either way, Eddie Howe will be seen as a brilliant manager in the Newcastle, um, in this in this era of Newcastle because of how well he's propelled them. With despite having so so much money, he spent proportionally so little and done so well, getting probably that I I definitely have them in the top four as it stands. I think they could still get third, to be honest. Just just you think because, that... just because of the the current games they got coming up, and even with if they wanted to go ahead of City, City have got a really tough run of fixtures here with loads of the top big six teams in the next games. So if they win, as we said, even if they win three and get a draw maybe for the next five, they could overtake City. You never know. It depends how we do. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think they'll overtake City. But um, going around it then, say we were saying that they're going to challenge for the title this season, and that is a possibility, which I don't think it is. What do you think on that? I don't think, think they, I don't think they could win the league, no. But I think they're, de right. they're definitely for top four. But to secure top four, who would you sign if you were Newcastle United in the January transfer window? One signing, only say one, because obviously you could do a list. Um, but who's realistic as well for Newcastle? Because I was thinking one of the two Leicester boys. So either Tielemans, whose contract is expiring, or um, Madison, who they've been heavily linked to. I think one of those just to beef up that midfield a bit. Yeah, uh, would be very good. Um, alternatively, you're going to look at. I was thinking about this, and I know it's going to cost a lot of money, and it depends on their financial fair play and where they are. Um, but you could go for McAllister from Brighton, or someone who fits my thoughts on like teamwork, ethos, etc. And I don't think you'd be able to get him at the moment as it stands, but maybe down the line is Mason Mount. I, for okay. some reason, there's something about him that I think he's going to end up at Newcastle. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm in agreement on the midfield. I think that's where they need the upgrades because I think the the front the forward line is brilliant. They've got Almiron, St. Maximin, Isak, and Wilson. The back line is obviously no problems there. They're one of the best defenses. I'd be looking at someone who I think, for example, this player he's he's been linked with a lot of big clubs over the past few seasons, but I don't think anyone's fully gone in for him. And this sort of signing would be good. I think Ruben Devers would be perfect for them in the midfield. Ooh. A hard working midfielder, someone who can spray a pass about. I think him paired with Gimaraes and then maybe Willock with a bit of energy. I think that three would be lovely in the midfield. Yeah. Willock has impressed me how sort of defensively yeah. astute he is as well. I know he, he was good when he first moved in uh, to the Newcastle side and he's a good player and he was good at Arsenal. Not amazing, but he was good. Um, I think that would be a great midfield to build on as a basis. I mean, Bruno, if Bruno Gimaraes stays at Newcastle, he's going to be a Newcastle legend. He is sensational. Really? Everything he touches seems to like he just dictates play, doesn't he? He's really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all from my side of it. I don't think they can win the league, but I think they will win the league eventually because money and stuff. <laughs> but uh, do you want to add anything else? No, no. I just, as always, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think they can win the league? I mean, we've made our thoughts clear. We think it's top four realistic for Newcastle. But yeah, definitely we're looking next two or three even maybe the next couple of years, actually, that they could win win the league based on how they how they're going with the current money they've spent, at least. Yeah, be sure to be sure to like the video if you have enjoyed though, and be sure to subscribe uh, for more from us. Um, and yeah, I hope you do enjoy, and I hope for Newcastle fans, I hope you have a good rest of the season, but not to Arsenal's detriment.